All right, everybody, welcome to the video here for lesson number six. So the opening exercise gives us this diagram. We have an, an angle there at, uh, at angle B of a right angle, and then we have a chord of AC. I'd like you to explain what's wrong with this diagram, All right? If you have to look back at what we did in lesson six or lesson, I'm sorry, lesson five or lesson four to get the answer here. All right, so hopefully you saw that if this is a right angle here, this segment AC would actually have to be the diameter of this circle. Since it's not the diameter of the circle, it doesn't give us a right angle. So to explain that, right, and inscribed angle of 90 degrees will be inscribed to a semi circle aka ac would need to be the diameter that's not the case here which is why that's an incorrect picture all right so moving right along today's lesson is uh kind of going about one simple rule and that's what happens when two chords intersect each other there's a special relationship that happens with the angle so, so far we've talked about central angles, we've talked about inscribed angles, but we haven't actually talked about what happens at this point of intersection of two chords. And that's what we're going to talk about today. The rule is right here. So the rule says in a circle, when two chords intersect, the angle formed is equal to half of the sum of the intercepted arcs. Now, what I like to do is kind of simplify that, right? The angle is equal to half of the arc plus the arc. So in this first picture, I see this angle points to this arc, and that same angle would be vertical here, which would point to this arc. So we could say the angle is equal to half of the sum of the two arcs. I like to always put the bigger arc first. It doesn't have to be that way. And that just becomes, can you type that in your calculator? So 1 half times 190 plus 70. I don't need to pull the calculator up for that. I'm pretty sure we all could get 130 here for that answer. So use what I just did here on that first example and try the next two yourself. All right, welcome back. Hopefully you got the second one right. So I did X equals one half of 66 plus 70, and I got 68 degrees for that angle. Now the third one, if you did correctly, I hope you did, but it looks like there's a little bit more algebra to do here. So looking at the arc, so here we have a missing arc instead of a missing angle. So I'm still going to put everything in the right spot. So the angle is 72. The two arcs are X and 99 algebraically to get rid of a half we multiply both sides by 2 2 times 72 is 144 and then I just subtract 99 to the other side so the algebra here is not what you're learning in geometry you should know how to do that already but we could kind of resurface and, and relearn some of those skills again so Number two is one of those questions that we could just think about later. We don't have to do right now. Uh, the big thing here is uh, just understanding the rule that we want above. So we're going to skip number two. All right. So it says another important concept that involves intersecting chords is the length of their partitions. When two chords intersect within a circle, they form a special triangle, uh, which comes up with what we call partitions. So there's a proportion that's going to be involved here. The length of segment AB is not going to be the same as the length of segment CD, but they are going to be in proportion. And the reason why is explained through exercise 3. So exercise 3 is an explanation. If you understand the explanation I'm about to go through, awesome for you. If not, don't worry about it. Just look at the rule that we'll eventually get to at the bottom of the page here. So it says, in the diagram, draw segments AC and db now if you look i just created two triangles these two triangles are different sizes but there's some things that are the same about them part a says state a set of vertical angles i have a vertical angle here and here so i can say angle a ec and 
angle B E D. Now, one of the things that we learned way back in proofs was that vertical angles are congruent. So I already have one set of congruent angles. It then says, explain why angle ACD, ACD, and angle DBA, DBA, are congruent to each other. Now, because this is in a circle, all the circle properties kind of have to come out to play here a little bit. So let's take a look at something. Whoops. If I highlight this arc, arc AD, what do I notice about the two angles that we had you label here, right? Angle ACD and angle DBA are both inscribed to arc AD. So they're congruent because they are inscribed to the same arc. Then it says state another set of congruent angles uh, that have the same reason as part B. So this angle here, CAE, and this angle here, BDE, are both congruent because they're inscribed to BC. But just from parts A and B, we have enough information to say that these two triangles are similar. They're similar by what we call angle angle. So you can start to see that this is kind of like a proof. All right. So we've just proved this by angle angle. So now we know that these two triangles are similar to each other, which means their corresponding sides are proportional. So I've already set up a proportion for you. Segment AE corresponds to segment CE, and DE corresponds to segment BE. So we have these corresponding pieces across from each other. So if I do some simple cross multiplication, I can say AE times BE is equal to CE times D. Now the reason why this is important is AE times BE, well that's the two segments of the chord AB, and CE times ED, those are the two pieces of segment or chord CD. So it's the part of the chord times the other part of the chord is equal to the other chord's product as well. So here's the rule, if two chords intersect within a circle, then a product of the partition segments is equal to the product of the uh, partitions parts of the other chord. So the chords are going to get cut into pieces. Those pieces get multiplied together. The reason behind this rule is everything we just did here in example three. Now, if you understood all of that, great. If not, just worry about the rule, and you'll see they're not really that difficult. So let's take a look at a couple. <clears throat> so in exercise four, I see a part of a segment here which is 4, and a part of a segment here, which is 9. So if I multiply 4 times 9, that should be equal to the other segment, which has parts of x and 6. So I have 6 times x. All we're doing here is taking the parts of the segment and multiplying them together. So if we do some quick math here, 4 times 9, that's 36. 6 times x is 6x, algebra it up, and we get x is 6. The next one's a little bit more challenging. So let's take a look at this chord here first, the one that has the x's. So each part of this chord is x and x. So I could say x times x. Now if you look, the two pieces of this chord, I'll use highlighters here so you can see it a little bit better. I have one piece here, which I'll highlight in green, and I have this piece here, which I'll highlight in purple. So I need to know the length of the green piece and the length of the purple piece. The length of the green piece is two. The length of the purple piece, I only know this little piece of it is three, but there is a way of me finding this length. It's a radius. What do we know about all radii? They're all the same size. The radius of this circle is 5. So this radius must also be 5. So this whole length, this whole purple or pink length, is 8. So I'm going to say x times, or 2 times 8. So I get x squared is equal to 16 square rooted. And I get x is equal to 4. 
The third one is very similar to the one in the middle that we just did together. So go ahead, pause the video, and try the third one by yourself. When you come back to the video, it'll be done for you, and I'll talk through how I got my answer. All right, so welcome back. So I did x times x because this horizontal chord has pieces of x and x. The vertical chord has a piece of 3 and then a piece that has a length of 9. How I found that purple length was I saw that it already had a length of 3. The radius of the circle was 6, so this radius is also 6. So in total, the purple chord is, or the purple segment is 9. So now when I solved, I got the square root of 27, which we know, because we've done it so many times this year, we can show that answer two different ways. We can show it as a decimal, which I did. I just typed in the calculator, I got 5.2. Or I can simplify. If this question asks you to simplify, we're looking at 9 times 3. So 3 square roots of 3 would be the answer in simplest radical form. All right. This is a good opportunity for you to pause the video, try the homework assignment, and then come back. I tried to keep the homework assignment in this lesson pretty straightforward. If you just follow the notes, you got it. The first uh, question talks about angles, and it goes back and forth between angles and segments. So we're learning here in this lesson two different rules. So make sure that you're looking at the rules here of chords. All right, welcome back to the video. Let's see how we did. So the first question gives us that arc SW is 38. So let's mark that in my picture. And arc WR is 98. Now notice this segment TW is a diameter. Anytime I see a diameter, I know that that is going to cut the circle in half. So if I take 180 and subtract 98, I get 82 for this arc over here. And if I take 180 and subtract 38, I get 142 for this big arc over here because of this line being the diameter. Now, it wants us to find the angle WXS. WXS. It wants this angle here. So now I have to figure out what arcs should we add together. There are going to be the arcs that are coming from these two angles, so 38 and 82. So the angle, which we don't know, so we'll call it X, is equal to 1 half of 82 plus 38. Type that in your calculator, see what we get. We get 60. All right, let's take a look at the next one. The next one says that EK is 5. It says FK is 6. It says GK is 3. And it wants us to find the length of GH. I don't have anything that can find the length of GH, but I can find KH. And then I can just add up some numbers here and get my final answer. So I see that I have two chords. They intersect each other, so I can multiply the parts together. So I have 30 is equal to 3x divided by 3. So x is 10. Now remember, x is only the length of KH. Notice it's a choice, but that's not the answer. Because I want to know the length from G all the way to H. So if this is now 10, this total length is 13. Number three gives us circle O. It says that uh, T is the midpoint of QS. If T is the midpoint of QS, that means QT and TS are exactly the same length. It says PT is 8, and it says QS is 40. So that means each of these little pieces is 20. And it wants us to find the length of the diameter of the circle. Well, I can find this piece, which we'll call X, using this new rule we have. So I can say part times part is equal to part times part. So I have 400 is equal to 8x, divide by 8, and I get x is equal to 50. So this long piece here is 50. So the diameter from P all the way to R is 58. All right, these are kind of like two-part questions, right? I'm using the properties that we learned in the lesson, but we're also learning what you already know about circles. Number four says, in circle O from problem three, so the same exact circle from above, 
it says QS and PR are perpendicular, and it says if arc QR is 150, what is arc PS? So let's redraw the same picture here. Let's label it up. P, S, T, R, O, and Q. It says this is perpendicular, so that's a 90 degree angle there. And it says QR is 150. Well, since QR is 150, I already know QP is 30. I know that because this is a half of a circle. Now, if that's a 90 degree angle, I can find this arc here. So I could say the angle is equal to the half of the sum of the two arcs. Multiply both sides by 2, and I can get 180 is equal to 150 plus x. Subtract 150, and we can say 30 is equal to x. So this angle here, or this arc here, is 30. The arc they want is from P all the way to S. Well, that's a silly question. This is just 180. I think what I wanted you to find was from R to S. Okay, but we can find from R to S is 150 because that's a half of a circle. So we can find all the arcs in this picture just by knowing this simple rule. In number five, it says in problem four, there are any arcs that are congruent? Yes, there are. All right, so we could say arc QP is congruent to arc PS. We can say arc QR is congruent to arc rs. This is kind of developing a, a rule of circles that we really don't talk too much about in this course, but it is there. And that's if a diameter is perpendicular to a chord, the arcs across from each other are always going to be the same size, right? Because it's perpendicular, we're creating an equidistant, uh, equal distance from all the points here, so the arcs are all going to be the same size. Don't stress over that problem, though. Just know how to use this rule here. Number six gives us kind of an interesting picture. So let's see what we have here. So it says CD is congruent to DE. So these two chords are the same size. It says AP is three. It says PQ is five. And it says QB is seven. It also tells us that QD is 14, not drawn in size, obviously. And it wants us to find two different segments. It wants us to find PD and it wants us to find EQ. EQ is going to be a little bit easier to find first. So let's just redraw this circle and ignore segment CD. So if I was to redraw this circle and draw an AB and DE, I know the distance from A to Q is 8. I know the distance from Q to B is 7. I know the distance from D to Q is 14, and I want to know this distance, QE. So I can say 8 times 7 is equal to 14 times x. So if we do 8 times 7, that's 56 equals 14x divided by 14. And we get x is equal to whatever that comes out to be. I think it's 4. 56 divided by 14, we get 4. So I can say QB is 4, or EQ. So we did that one. To find the length of PD, we have to do a little bit more work here. So to find PD, we have to understand two things. We have to understand that this segment was congruent to this segment. So if those segments are the same exact size, they're going to be cut differently or similar in a lot of different ways. But what we can do here is we can look at um, a couple pieces that we now know. So what do we know about CD? I know that CD is 18. So if I make PDY, what would be the length of CP? It would be 18 minus Y. So again, let's redraw a circle here with just the segments I want to use. PB is 12. 
So I could say 3 times 12 is equal to x times, it's not x, y, I made it y, y times 18 minus y. So algebraically speaking, I would distribute. So I'm going to wind up getting, I'll go over here because I need more room. So I'm going to get 36 is equal to 18y minus y squared. Well, as soon as I see y squared, I want to try and factor. So if I try and factor, I would move the y squared and 18 to the other side. That would give me y squared minus 18y plus 36 is equal to 0. And I'm trying to figure out what multiplies to make 36 but adds to make negative 18. So I got to do some calculator work here and figure that out. All right, remember there's lots of ways of doing that. I like to divide 36 by x in my graphing calculator and look through my choices here for something that would add to make negative 18. Um, unfortunately, nothing does that. So to solve this question, we would have to use the quadratic formula which we don't need to do for this course. This is kind of a bad question. But there is a way of solving it if we really wanted to. This would be what we would say, let's do an accelerated. Okay, if you understood how to get QE, we are in good shape. Let's look at 7. So it tells us the measure of arc HJ is 90. It tells us that KM is 100 and it wants us to find x. This extra segment here is just there to confuse you. This is the angle is equal to half of the sum of the two arcs. So we wind up getting 95. And that's it. Hopefully this video helped. Reach out to me if you have questions, and hopefully I see you soon.